What's up guys, my name is Brandon and just as expected, Apple has just released iOS 17 Beta 3 for registered developers about two weeks after the release of Beta 2. Now the public beta will be coming very soon, we'll talk about that near the end of this video, but along with this release, Apple also dropped the third beta for iPadOS 17, macOS Sonoma, watchOS 10, and tvOS 17. But of course in this video we're talking all about iOS 17 Beta 3. So let's start with the size of this update you can see it came in at just over one gigabyte which is kind of large for a third beta so 1.15 gigs on my 14 pro max let's check out the build number the new build number for beta 3 is 21a 5277h so once again, we have an H at the end of the build number, just like in beta two. And then if we go back and go down to the modem firmware update, we also have a minor change there. So it's now 2.04.01 before it was 0 0.00 at the end. So minor change there. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 17 beta three? And the first thing, something very minor I just wanted to mention is in the software update screen, down at the bottom, it used to say how much time is expected to install this update but apple has removed that so for example here was the previous beta it said this update will take about 20 minutes to install but apple has removed that if we head into the music application and tap on these three dots you will notice that we have a brand new option here to view credits so if you tap on view credits it's going to show all of the credits for that song so the performing artists the composition and lyrics the production and engineering and also the available audio quality so you can now see a lot more information about the songs that you listen to straight from the music application without having to google all of these things and then you also have a new section here for view lyrics and when you tap on that we have a new ui for the full lyrics but what i found interesting is that on the album page you cannot see the full credits for the entire album you can only see it on a per song basis so if you go to the album and then tap on the three dots you could just see those credits on a per song basis which i found pretty interesting hopefully they do add the credits for albums after this in the reminders application if we go into one of our new grocery lists so this is a brand new feature in ios 17 where if you type something in it's going to use machine learning to categorize those grocery items you will notice some changes here so first off you will notice that we have the title of that list up in the top center versus being over on the left hand side and this is a very annoying issue i have with ios 17 by the way what you see right here airdrop i have airdrop turned off on both devices but yet i'm still getting that animation quite interesting but anyways you will notice here a change under carrot cake and you will see in beta 3 we have a new option a new kind of suggestion to move that to the bakery section and if we tap on move to bakery section it will create or move it to that section as intended which is nice we have a couple of changes inside of the weather application so if we scroll down until we get to the weather alert you will notice that for the heat advisory this is ios 17 beta 3 on the right by the way you will notice under heat advisory we have more information so before it just said heat advisory until the time but now it says these conditions are expected until that time and it also includes the date the full date so it says wednesday july 5th if we head into the averages tab and then scroll down you will notice that under monthly averages the text is kind of built in to this section with the chart whereas before it was kind of a standalone little text box there and the text was smaller and in the precipitation tab before we had kind of a guide to tell us what these colors meant so it said now and versus the average which was gray but now in this update these are reversed so it now shows the average over on the left hand side and the now on the right hand side and we also do not have that guide saying now or average if we go into the messages application and tap on the plus icon you will notice that the photos glyph icon to the left now shows your actual most recent photos so it's a dynamic glyph whereas before it was just this standard photo next to photos and then also under location it now has a gray outline versus a blue outline on beta 2. and speaking of photos if we go to a photo of an animal for example the glyph icon for visual lookup has changed again so beta 2 on the left beta 3 on the right and speaking of visual lookup we now have a glyph icon for laundry care so in beta 2 it just had the eye with the sparkles now in beta 3 we have an actual glyph icon 
for the laundry care visual lookup. And when you tap on that, you will see that it shows laundry care. So in beta two, it actually showed that glyph icon right there, but it didn't show on the image itself right here at the bottom. Also in photos, if we go down to the recently deleted folder, if we tap on select up in the top right, you will notice that we have a new three dot menu down there. So before it just said either delete all or recover all, but now in beta three, we have a three dot menu where we have the option to recover all or delete all. Makes it look a lot cleaner here in the recently deleted folder. We have a new splash screen for the home application. So it outlines the new features that we've already covered before, accessory control widgets, new look and feel and activity history. So none of those are new, but this is a new splash screen in beta three. It just popped up for me in this third beta. But if we do go into the home application, you will notice a minor change to our smart light, for example, here. So I have the nano leaf triangles, which you can set to multiple colors. And now we have a color picker at the bottom instead of just having this one color before, and you'd have to tap on that to choose the different colors. And if you have a home kit enabled garage door, you have a new glyph icon for that garage door and the home application. In the health application, if we go into our state of mind section and then go to log our mood for the day, you will notice that the background is different here. So the default background is more of like this gray color. Also the time before it had this gray background. Now it just shows a more cleaner 309 PM. And then also these, this box right here, how you felt overall today seems a little bit smaller than it was on beta two. Now, if we tap on next, and then as we move the slider, you will notice that the button changes colors down there dynamically. Whereas before in beta three, the color of the button, the next button stayed the same at blue. So I like how it dynamically changes here in beta three and also the overall color here has changed. So it's more of like a really deep, dark purple in beta three, whereas before it was kind of a lighter shade of purple and then also it's the same for all the others. So the colors overall have just changed here, especially if you go over to very pleasant, it's more of an orange now versus a yellow before. And what's interesting here in beta three is that you can no longer skip why you're feeling a certain way. So before we could skip why we're feeling very pleasant, but now you have to choose, you know, what best describes this feeling. So I'll just say peaceful, for example, whereas before I could have just skipped that. Now, unfortunately, if you guys remember in beta two, we had a really cool looking transparent clock widget. Well, it appears that was actually a bug because that was not there in beta one and it's not here again in beta three. So I would assume the fully transparent clock widget was just a bug, unfortunately. But if we go into the clock application and then go over to timers, we have a change here under recent. So before it would show a green button that said start, but now in beta three, we just have these little play buttons right here instead of having text that says start it's also slightly larger so i think this is a better change for the timers if you head into settings and then to passwords there's a change to family passwords so on beta 2 it said family passwords with this glyph icon to the left but now in beta 3 it says share passwords with family and it has this new glyph icon to the left also in beta 3 we have a fix for the recents tab in the phone application it's now back to normal and here's a prime example as i was just just about to talk about this feature the keyboard has been fixed in beta 3 this is one of the biggest bug fixes since beta 1 and beta 2 had major issues with the keyboard just like you're seeing over here on the left that appears to be fixed in beta 3. another important bug fix in beta 3 is that you can now add and withdraw money again from the apple savings account so this was broken in beta 2 i think the only way around that was to use a bluetooth keyboard but now that has been patched and you can now add and withdraw money from apple savings as expected and then also if you had issues with the mail application more specifically related to imap accounts those appear to be working again in beta 3. and i've also noticed that the crossfade feature in apple music appears to be fixed in beta 3 as well so i've tested this a lot in beta 2 and i had a lot of issues with crossfade just completely not working on certain songs and it would kind of just skip to the next song but that appears to be improved here in beta 3. but as far as any outstanding bugs or any new bugs that were introduced here in beta 3 I really haven't noticed any. It seems like beta three fixes like pretty much most of my issues, if not all of my issues that I had in beta two. Now I will continue to monitor the issue with focus modes causing respring's. I've talked about that quite a bit. Apple responded to me. I talked about that in my previous Apple weekly episode. So I will continue to monitor that. But so far, I mean, we have a lot of bug fixes. We have a bug fix for the keyboard, which is my number one issue. We have a fix for the, you know, recents tab and phone that's fixed. You know, we have a lot of fixes here in beta three, which I did not expect with an 
H at the end of the build number. So that looks good. I will continue testing though to see if we have any new bugs introduced here in beta three. Now, as far as the overall performance goes, I am going to run a quick Geekbench test, but my overall first impressions are that it feels about the same as beta two. Now we do have less bugs. So the UI is going to feel better just because we don't have those keyboard bugs, the lag when scrolling, especially through the recents tab and phone, all of those appear to be fixed. So performance, you know, does seem to be a little bit better, but let's see what the Geekbench score tells us. All right, so we scored a slightly higher single core score at 2641, but slightly lower on the multi core at 6708 here in beta three. So again, take these results with kind of a grain of salt. They don't really tell you everything about the performance of a device. I will just tell you after using this for a little bit, it does feel a little bit smoother and a little bit better overall compared to beta two, as you would expect. I mean, these early betas, you would expect it to get better as the betas go on, especially going from beta three and onwards. But as far as battery life goes, obviously it's too early to tell if battery life is better or worse, but you guys will have to go back to the beginning and see what percentage I was at right now. I'm at 51%. So you guys will have to let me know what my battery life was at the beginning of this video and see if it's better or worse than previous betas. So far though, just from my first impressions, it does seem better, which I didn't think I would say battery life got worse in beta two. So this gives me a little bit of hope for beta three, but of course, stay tuned for my follow-up video, which I will have coming on Saturday, where I will tell you more details about the battery life and if it's actually improved for the very first time ever for me on iOS 17. So stay tuned for that. All right, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is going to be iOS 17 public beta one. So if you are signed up or if you plan to sign up for the public beta, when can you expect that to get released? And as I've been saying for the past month or so I would expect the public beta of iOS 17 to be released next week on the week of July 10th. And Apple usually releases the public betas on a Monday. So we could be seeing that public beta as early as Monday, July 10th. And that's the day that I'm going to guess we're going to see that on, but we could also see it on the 11th or even the 12th at the latest, in my opinion. I think it's going to be earlier in the week next week. And usually that is the same build as developer beta three. So the build that you saw in this video, that's most likely going to be the same build in the first public beta. And then after that, we should expect to see iOS 17 at beta four the following week. So we're probably still on a two week release schedule, which means that we should see iOS 17 and beta four on the week of July 17th. Now, if you're still on iOS 16, iOS 16.6 .6 is going to be the next public release. And I would expect the RC build for that to come really as early as even tomorrow, July 6th, but we could be seeing that next week on the week of July 10th. And then after that, we'll most likely see the final release of iOS 16.6 .6 the very next week. So most likely on July 17th right there, if we get the RC on the week of the 10th. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 17 beta three, quite a few new features and changes. But the most important thing, in my opinion, is the fact that we have a lot of bugs that have been addressed here in beta three, despite still having an H at the end of the build number. So that bodes well for the future of iOS 17. Also, the battery drain does not seem to be near as severe as it was in beta two. So I will continue to monitor that and let you guys know my full experience after using it for a few days. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Also make sure to subscribe for more iOS 17 coverage just like this. Check out the Apple Den newsletter down in the description below. And thanks again for watching guys. I will see you soon.